All right. All set. Thank you. Okay, so this is, uh, it's 6.30, so this is the August 21st, 2017 Board of Selectmen meeting. And our first order of business is to meet with our Police Chief, Frank Avalera, regarding a commendation for Eric Boulay. Frank? The department received uh, information on July 19th, uh, 2017. Uh, Eight-year-old Matthew Dubois was attending the Kids Cafe sponsored by the <clears throat> Freetown Elementary School District held at uh, George R. Austin Middle School. Uh, approximately 12.45, Camp Counselor Eric Boulay observed Matthew uh, walking towards his direction with the hands around his neck and a universal choking sign. Uh, Eric rushed over to Matthew, determined that Matthew was not exchanging any air. He began to lose color in his face and lips. Uh, at that point, Eric immediately placed himself behind Matthew and began performing abdominal thrusts until the obstruction was removed. It was found that Matthew had choked on uh, some hot candy that he had inadvertently been swallowed whole. Eric was able to provide assistance and support to Matthew until his mother arrived a short time later. Uh, as a result of this information, uh, the department wanted to honor Eric with a Distinguished Citizen Award uh, for his actions to provide medical intervention to a student at Kids Cafe undoubtedly prevented a tragic accident. Mr. Boulay is a shining example of citizens who go above and beyond to make our community a safer environment. Thank you very much, Eric. I do appreciate it. Here. You guys can hug each other. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the photo. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. We always have room on the fire department, right? Call a firefighter? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, we need big strapping young people like you. Great, thank you. Frank, thanks for, for um, recommending that. And, and I, I always appreciate, obviously, when, when people step forward and, and do what they need to do to help someone out. So I'm sure that uh, that's what your training is for and, and that that's the whole point. But, you know, with that said, it's certainly a great, uh, great thing to, to see it work. So uh, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So our next agenda uh, agenda item is to uh, vote on and present a proclamation for Rena uh, Fernald for her hundredth birthday. They're coming at six forty. So we're going to hold off on that. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Good seeing you again. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Usually I'll give you candy, but you choked on some. You can still take some. You can still take some. No. You can still take some. Soft candy this time. Bye, Lisa. I'm a Monday night off, and I'm still at a selectman's meeting. There you go. you. All right, so we did our challenge coins. I want to give one to each member of the board of selectmen. My son, that was one of the Wow, these are cool. Your service to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you. Has our bad. mission wow. statement? Yeah, it has our mission statement on it. Yeah, that's really cool. Wow. Nice. Thank, Thank you very much. Get one of those things and hang it right there. Oh, when I drive my car, I'll have it so I can yell and scream, look at me, I got this badge. That's really cool. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. 640. How old are you? Thanks, John. Thank you. Brett Palmenter, we're doing too. We didn't have that in time for his retirement. Let's do uh, number nine while we're at it. Nine. All right. Who are you? 
Kelly Conway wants to be appointed as a full member of the Agricultural Commission. We threw her off as an associate <laughs> due to a <laughs> clerical error. I will make a motion that we appoint her a full member. I'll second that. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries. It's unanimous. It's always good that we're throwing people off for not attending because then they straighten out their records, I guess. <laughs> it does. Well, they actually throw them off. <laughs> right, right. Um, let's do eight. Wonderful. Eight is um, appointing David Kramer, Jacqueline Kennedy, Gail Fish, and Diane Faria to the Lakeville Arts Council for a reappointment to expire on July 31, 2018. So moved. Oh. Second that, I guess. Uh, any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so agenda item number 10 is request to appoint Alan Edwards as full member of Council on Aging and appoint Joanne Bowles as an alternate member of the Council on Aging. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second. These, uh, the full membership for Alan Edwards would expire on July 31, 2020, and Joanne Bowles' um, alternate membership would expire July 31st, 2018. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. It is 6.40. And agenda item number two is to vote on and present a proclamation to Rena Fernald for her 100th birthday. All right. The third oldest person in Lakeville. Really? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See what the hell's with that? <laughs> So you might know all this. No, I don't. <laughs> but but you might not. I don't know. But you're, you're claiming plausible deniability. Just for everyone else, I've been informed that Rena has four children, 12 grandchildren, 20 great-grandchildren, and 17 great-great-grandchildren. <laughs> Sounds about right. Is I that know. okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's amazing. So I have. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we that we approve this proclamation, but I want to read it first. Um, this is from Town of Lakeville, Massachusetts proclamation. Whereas Rena Fernald is a citizen of Lakeville and has been a resident of Lakeville for approximately 34 years and observed her 100th birthday on August 7, 2017, now therefore it be resolved that the selectmen in the Town of Lakeville, Massachusetts do hereby proclaim August 22nd as Rena Fernald Day in honor of Rena Fernald for reaching this distinguished age of 100 years. The selectmen do hereby request that all citizens congratulate her for her achievement. On behalf of the Board of Selectmen and the citizens of the town of Lakeville, this resolution be signed, sealed, and delivered on this August 21 uh, year 2017 by the Board of Selectmen. Now you have to celebrate tomorrow. So that's my motion. <laughs> All, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Motion passes. It's unanimous. Did do they have? Um, I think we have the proclamation in here to sign. Let's you want to say something? Uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's your secret? The secret to living long. What's your secret. Oh, I wish I knew. <laughs> I wish I knew. Do you need a copy of it signed? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Why not? It's your day tomorrow. So you get it written down. <laughs> Prepared speech. That's okay. I want to thank the Board of Selectmen for. I don't think we're going to write inviting. it. Inviting. Inviting me this evening. It is an honor and a privilege 
I have lived in Lakeville for 34 years and liked what I saw here many years ago, and I still like it because it is a place called home. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You. Oh, thank you. Nice. Oh, yes. I'll get your folder. Yeah. Want to turn that around for the picture? Oh. Hold that up. To, yeah, take that. We'll get a nice family turn picture outside. Great. Yeah, okay. Can I just hold that up? Hold it up for him so he can take a this picture. Like, like that. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yep. However you like. Hold it however you like. <laughs> Wednesday. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. That's good. Okay. Thank Thanks very much. Oh, they're gonna put it in the folder for you. Know? Oh, I make a lot. Is that too many hills around? No. Yeah. <laughs> She's my grandma. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I know Casey. She went to school with my daughter Vicky. She's my sister. Casey is? Yes. yes. <laughs> what a small world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in Lakeville we probably are. <laughs> It's, it's, really it's Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, that's the joke we just talked about, yeah, We John. just talked about that earlier, before the meeting. <laughs> you, can, you can escape. Or yes. if you want to listen Get to the rest of the meeting. It's yeah. Scoot out. Get your picture taken out front. Are going to take your picture out front? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for coming, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey, I don't want. <laughs> She's hot, if any of you guys have a father or a grandpa. Good to see you. <laughs> I will. I saw Rachel. Oh, you did? Yeah. I see her a lot at dance. Because my daughter, Gianna, dances. So you have three? Oh. Yes. Gianna's my oldest, though. She's five. Oh, well, five. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. You. Wow, well, huh? Have a good night. Thank you, Fred. All right, so this is for Fred. See you. Just delay that until he comes. Yep. If he comes, and then otherwise we'll just do it later. So we're going to jump to number 11. Number 11 is to um, accept a resignation of James Govea for the Historical Commission. He submitted a, a written letter just saying as of the state he's residing as a board member. Do we want to advertise for a new member? I think we do. I, I, think. I would agree. Hi. And here, Fred. Hi, Fred. <laughs> Gra no, grab right. a seat. Grab a seat there. Front row. All right. So I'll make a motion that we accept James Gobey's resignation from the historic com Historical Commission. I'll second that. Any further discussion? I'll all send him a letter of thanks. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Mm -hmm. right, we got to wait a few minutes still here. Yeah. Well, it's easy. Yeah, 12 is Lakeville Arts Council. Want some signage? They're having a festival. They have it every year. Do we really need signs? <laughs> <laughs> we sort of all know where it is. It's right at the corner there. No, so they, they're putting up some signs, or they want to put up some signs they want to use the town sign two weeks prior to the event, which is scheduled, I think, um, September. And they want to have permission for, to have the sign located at Precinct and Route 79. I, I personally don't have a problem with this, obviously. No. Um, so I move that we accept their request as requested. I'll second that. You, any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Let's see here. Minutes? Yeah, so we have some minutes here. Um, August 11th. 
Uh, everybody have an opportunity to review the minutes? Yeah. Did you have any changes? I, does it usually, doesn't it usually say when it ended? And when no. we went into? No, then you have a separate set for the executive That'll be session. when we went in? Yeah. Okay. Guess I don't read the minutes often enough. <laughs> I was like, it's one page, and I, I thought it just ended suddenly. I'm fine. All right. All those in favor of approving the meeting minutes? Aye. 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 I don't even know who moved that. Me. All right. Did you get a second on that? Yeah, I kind of did you. Yeah, you just wing it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an approximation. Um, mm, mm, discuss scheduling of special town meeting. This is random. We're on number four. So the timing of this is, is really for the um, acceptance of roads in the Cedar Pond Preserve. We want to try to get that done prior to the winter. So November 9th was the top coat of that, uh, of that road. So we're thinking Monday the 13th, assuming it's available. Does that work for everyone? It works, but I think that's about the only item that we need to have a meeting on unless we want to start transferring money. So oh, that. yeah, we yes. definitely want to so, do that. <laughs> right, because the, the Warren articles are pretty slim, which I'm not disappointed. So, right. There's, so. there's quite a few zoning changes we're, we're putting up there, too. Um, Is that some all? Some of this stuff that you can see these rezonings and then there's some more of that that um, bylaw uh, cleanup that's going on too. Yeah. yeah, is that coming from Zebrac? Like all these yes. rezoning things? Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Hopefully the laborers contract will be Yeah. Yeah, um, hopefully finished. we have the contract resolved as well. Yep. Um, so we're going to start at 7. Does that mean we're going to have a pre-meeting at 6.30? I may be... I usually schedule you All right. for a half an hour. 7's okay for me. I may be rushing in at... For the 6.30 may be tough, but... That's fine. You, I mean, all we would be doing is talking about whatever... Yeah. Transfers yeah. Okay. or whatever, whatever you else, told right. Whatever you told <laughs> us at the previous meeting, we'd just be repeating it. <laughs> right. Okay. So... That should be fine with me. Um... <laughs> Okay, so do we want to vote this now? Well, we, I'm waiting for confirmation from the high school. Okay. So I'll put right. it on your yep. next meeting to okay. we'll officially, uh, vote, officially right. vote it, but just to get an idea. Okay. Um, the, the moderator was a little concerned um, about having a quorum in November that he wanted it held in October. So I did check with town council about voting on the uh, seat of pond subject to a later date and he recommended not doing anything contingent upon a later date but uh, the residents on seat of pond when they met with the planning board they know that their road is up for right, uh, acceptance and there's yeah, they, 31 they, houses yeah, in they, there they, they, they should show so up. they'll they'll show right. up they'll be warm right. i appreciate norm's insight on that but i think that now like you said there's a specific reason why we're having that meeting as late as we're having it, and it's to accommodate the needs of a pretty big neighborhood. Right. So I think between the the old faithful that we get to a town meeting plus 50 or 60 additional people, we should be good. Well, yeah. we did, when we did Woodridge Village and, Woodland, and things yeah. like that, right. the, 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 right. uh, it was packed. The plenty of people came Well, in. that was also... Right. Well, but that's the only reason, is... so maybe we should do road acceptance in big neighborhoods at the town meetings. <laughs> yeah. yeah, really. <laughs> On the on the uh, off. Uh, Hopefully, we don't have too many more special town meetings. <laughs> okay, so it is 6:50. So we now are finally at agenda item number three, and um, we have a proclamation for Fred Parmenter. Fred, thanks for joining us tonight. We were a little jealous that Keiko stole all the thunder at your retirement party, <laughs> so we wanted to have a proclamation. Um, honoring you in, in your work here at the town so I'm gonna read that proclamation and then we're gonna to vote to accept it and then we're gonna award that to you um, for, for thanking you for your years of service um, 
So this is the Town of Lakeville proclamation. Whereas Frederick Parmenter has been an employee of the Town of Lakeville, Massachusetts for the past 45 years, and whereas Frederick Parmenter began his employment with the town as a plumbing and gas inspector and has provided the public and tradesmen with efficient and reliable service, and whereas Frederick Parmenter became the assistant plumbing and gas inspector for the town upon stepping down from his position as plumbing and gas inspector, and whereas Frederick Parmenter has been instrumental in ensuring the safety of Lakeville's residents and businesses by providing professional inspections, and whereas upon Fred Frederick Parmenter's retirement, his zest for life, knowledge, sense of humor and stories, as well as his friendship will be missed by all those who have had the pleasure of working with him over the years. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the selectmen in the town of Lakeville, Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim August 21, 2017, as Frederick Parmenter Day, and the selectmen do hereby request that all citizens applaud Frederick for his many years of service to the town, and that all citizens wish, wish him well as he moves on with the next chapter of his life. On behalf of the Board of Selectmen and the citizens of Lakeville, this be resolved, this resolution be signed, sealed, and delivered on this 21st day of August in the year 2017 by the Lakeville Board of Selectmen. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Anyone? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right. It passes. It's unanimous. Congratulations. Lorraine gave you the original. Oh, yeah. Do we want to go? Do we want to go? That's today. Right. Get a photo with friends. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. We should get a free ice cream Excellent. somewhere or something. <laughs> We're, go, we're coming around to get a picture yeah, with you, Fred. Yes. Uh, Sorry about my mess. This is your proclamation. <laughs> here you go. Don't you guys stand right here? All right, we'll just spin around. Right on the side. All right. Yeah, come, come on. Come on, really? come on in. <laughs> squeeze in a little bit. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. There we go. I like squeezing. They look great. Got the right side this time. <laughs> One more. Two more. All right, great. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks. Do you need any of the proclamations at all? Thanks, Fred. Uh, uh, copy uh, yes, that's <laughs> your that's the original. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Fred, <laughs> Good to go, Fred. Good to go. Fred, here's a folder. Thank you, Fred, for coming in. Thank you. See you. Take care. You're still here around, I bet. <laughs> you have to keep him in line. <laughs> That's a full-time job left. That's right. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Um, hmm. Agenda item number five. This was a, sol a suggestion um, by Rich LaCamera at one of our police station building committee meetings. We have a, a committee member who is commuting from Boston who wants to join in on on a call while he's traveling to the meeting and we had the conversation about whether he could vote and it in fact you can vote if the town adopts this regulation puts forward a policy relative to it. So I had uh, Rita's office look into this and we have some information on it and a few examples of policies that towns had uh, put together that cover the regulation um, and I think that they all they all do a good job of explaining the process generally speaking it's up to the chair to determine at their sole discretion as to whether somebody qualifies for one of these exemptions to be at a meeting. So you couldn't, uh, I think that if we were to 
enact this policy, I would want to make sure that, it, that we um, educated chairs that we don't want people to call in from Florida. We, we want people to be at meetings and it's under an emergency, a one-off emergency type of situation that we would be comfortable with them allowing somebody to, to participate remotely. Um, I think generally speaking, you wouldn't necessarily do it. Um, in even going back to that, that example of, of the person in our police station building committee, he was listening in more just to hear the conversation and less so to participate in the meeting, which I think is a distinction. Um, so can I ask how was, was it a cell phone on the table? I mean, what do we have for, like what was he listening in on? Was he calling in on some of the- No, the town. And that was an, on, on, enough I that- I put it on speaker, he could hear. He could hear? Okay. Yep. So, uh, I don't, you know, we, we don't have to make a decision on this tonight. I wanted to bring it up. Uh, I'm glad that we have these these examples to look at. I th I'm for this because I think that it gives board some flexibility and attendance. And if you have a, a committee or, or a committee member that you need, if you need a quorum, you need somebody there that they legitimately want to be a part of that meeting for the sake of making a decision to move something forward, I think that it would give all of the boards, all of our boards and commissions a little more flexibility than not having it. I mean, I think in practice, probably nobody will even use this. I thought you had to have a quorum it before does say that person uh, participates. Yeah. Right. Oh, did I say to get a quorum? Yeah. No. I'll say a lot of stuff that doesn't well, make sense. And if I may, Aaron, when this first came out, it's been a while since 2010, but I thought that the selectmen could decide which committees could do it. But after rereading it, it's if the board of selectmen voted, it's all committees. And like you said, they right. all have to be educated. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we, we create a policy. I mean, there's a bunch of policies here. We either pick one and adopt it as it is, or we can augment it to fit our needs. Uh, but I think that it's pretty straightforward. I guess I'd want to know, just maybe go back and look at the qualifications for people to be appointed to boards, because I guess my concern is possibly someone who's a, either a part-time resident, um, maybe getting appointed, which we're the appointing authority on the majority of this of these boards and commissions anyways um, but should we have somebody who doesn't actually physically live here and they're participating because they're allowed to participate in this role um, I, I just want to consider those concepts too if, I mean that might be fine you know if somebody lives here as you said in Florida half the year no no that's know, not acceptable that's, is my point so I think that then well, you I know, shouldn't say that because it says geographic it, distance is one of the right. under the. But, but again, CMR. I think it's a, it would be like an emergency set of circumstances. It wouldn't be they're in Florida six months out of the year and they call in for their their meeting every month or whenever. But I don't think happen. you can. From what I read, you can't pick and choose like that because of geographic distance being one of the the reasons for it. One could say you're in Boston. Or you, uh, one could say you're in north of Boston versus Florida, but I, what I don't like is we, we've addressed it in the past. I don't, I don't like the concept of not going to a meeting. Uh, and if someone can't make a meeting and you have a, you have a quorum because you can continue with the meeting. If if someone wants to listen in on a phone, I, I don't object to that. Because when you start to do selectmen's meetings as we move forward, they'll be live, anyways. I mean, you can they can Skype them to wherever the person is. But certainly, I agree with most of them except the geographic distance. Not that we not that we couldn't modify it. personal illness, personal disability, emergency, military service. Uh, you know, if someone's in in the hospital, if if one of us is in the hospital, and you want to have a vote of three selectmen and though you only need a, a two vote uh, you know 
you might make an exception, but most people can have the quorum anyways. I don't like the idea. I think it would, it's a step to be misused rather than to be helpful. I just see it being misused more than it would help. And it hasn't been an issue before. And if, if someone is coming from Boston because that's where they work, then they simply don't come to the meeting. I don't object to them not coming to the meeting. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I Just my general, my general feeling is that I think it. We have so many committees that I think it would be abused long term. Well, I almost wonder if you know if you wanted to try it, um, because you can revoke it by the same body that has enacted it by having giving actual duties and responsibilities to the chairman that come from the board of selectmen with regard to taking attendance. I almost feel like it would have to come out with, as you know, Aaron, as you're saying, education, but almost a required checkup with the board chairs to ensure that they're taking attendance properly, because clearly we've had multiple instances that just happened where that wasn't happening. Um, you know, that minutes are being done and voted on and they're approved consistently. I'm um, sorry I even brought this up. <laughs> You didn't. I, guess. <laughs> I did. I no, and I say that because you know what? I don't even care if this happens, honestly. I mean, I, I don't I've think I've already put way more thought into this than I would want to. And who's going to educate all of these chairs? I don't want to do it. So it's like uh, bring your own alcohol. That policy that we didn't want to yeah. enforce. Yeah. Well, really, it's like, do we really need a harbor master? <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm. I'm okay with it because I mean, in a board of three, certainly. If two no, really, can't like make it, you, you, make it. you guys have both raised. I, I'm joking with all that, but you guys have both raised some legitimate concerns for us to not move forward with it, and I and I and I don't think that. Um, you know, I don't have any arguments as to why I am for it. I mean, I brought it up for the sake of conversation. If the right. two of you have some reservations about it, then let's just move on. Um, I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, with that said, let's discuss the highway facility phasing plan. Here we go. Well, can I, can I, I know you don't want to belabor this. Can I just add one more point back to five? Sure. Just, um, I do think, though, it would be helpful to let people know if you do have the telephone that you can call in to be able to listen. You're not voting, but at least to be able to hear a conversation in the event that, you know, it, you, you kind of allow it to happen anyways, but we don't really do you want like to do offer that? it. Right. Do you want if, to, um, if, if you could, well, I, if you I, I bet the other party and, would object to not being able to speak because then if we allowed five people to do it, if, if you were sick and, and you're in the hospital, I'd love to have you. You'll have your computer there. We can Skype you in. You can almost be a member of it. Yeah, no, we, got we, it. I, I, I know. <laughs> Never mind. But I can. I can't see anyone who won't want to pipe in to say something, right? Okay, <laughs> right. No, I get it. I get yep. it. We're trying to. We're trying to help people that can't come to a meeting, but that's why we have lots of people in committees. Yeah. Okay. Business happens. Town business happens at town hall. It's really that simple. Yep. All right, number six. Discuss the highway facility phasing plan. Dear Mr. Burke. We received a letter from Jeremy Peck outlining his phasing plan for a proposed highway facility. The plan is subject to change. That's good, because once we get a hold of it. <laughs> no, seriously. So um, I thought this was great. I thought this was worthy of a conversation here at the board level to um, talk about what our expectations are relative to the scope 
of this. Now, I thought he's got um, some of these projects on here are, are things we've talked about. So he's, he's identified the need to clear the surveyed property line, which is something I know you want to yeah, see happen. Right, right. He's got this fuel pump thing in here where we know that that's an issue that we're going to have to deal with one way or the other. The new highway office, which funding is in place, um, you know, that's obviously something that, that gave him the money two fiscal years ago, so we're excited to see that happen. Um, then we have this, this other stuff that um, is projected out through the next two or three years um up through the, the the salt shed and then we have the long-term stuff which is a good 10 or 11 or 12 years out which anticipates the idea of an entirely new highway facility um which you know that day will come whether it's 10 years from now or, or not remains to be seen but at some point, the town will need to invest in a new highway facility. So this is, obviously, it's, it's very general in scope, but I'm glad that he provided it, and I thought that it was worth sharing um, to the two of you to kind of see what your thoughts were on it. Well, I, oh, I think it's a start in the right direction, but, uh, you know, one is one is things other than cleaning up the site I was only after cleaning up the site and certainly in 10 which is out to August 2029 I guess any clearing stumping necessary would be completed two months prior to start of work and would be limited to only necessary clearing I mean one, one says he's not really interested in cleaning up the property point to point unlike uh, what Nate and I had suggested but Clearing the survey line, walking it, then we can develop a, an action plan. The whole point was to find holes and areas and grades that we could use the material on without trucking it off-site. That yep. was really the premise behind this. Mm -hmm. And it's not to <coughs> offend neighbors. That is, if you do a berm that's, that's uh, uh, 10 feet high, flattened out with the Abavides and, and white pines, it would certainly block the noise. So this really doesn't go enough to clearing up the property, but clearing the survey line to a six-foot swath at least, at least allows us to walk the property and decide if there's a big hole, you're only going to clear to there to, to dump the material in. The whole point is to make everything's jammed in there. Uh, it will be uh, where are we going to put the, uh, the bins need funding? I don't know that there's a lot of funding involved in this stuff. I mean, it's like $1,000 probably to pour a little pad and put some cement blocks around. But it's a step in the right direction. So I, I call it a step in the right direction. But I don't want to mix uh, fixing the fuel pump along with clearing the property. So do you want to get some idea of the actual cost? I mean, the fuel pump piece, was that... 10 grand, 15 grand, something like that. Crazy, crazy money. Um, but to get those dollar figures, that would be in this fiscal year, at least for a conversation piece for the fall town meeting. If that's something that we want to do and you want to move forward on this, because there are items, you know, we can determine whether or not you want to fund them. I don't know what. It's really just what, two right. that I, are I mean, in this I, fiscal I don't, year. I don't know about what dispose of material I'm hoping that it can be consumed on the property itself and uh, time will tell once we clear once we do number one we can see if we can uh, you know that's one that says uh, need funding I'm I'm hoping that we're not going to spend a hundred thousand dollars moving material right so oh. so if, if you do one then we find out if seven uh, if we need to dispose of any off-site material. And we could always just add it to if we do find oh, out yeah. what it is onto yeah. the transfer right. at the special. Right, right. And, and there's nothing else other other than uh, install bins, which I thought was just, uh, you know, you've seen those cement barriers that they put around their bins, you dump the material in there and you process it and, yep. and send out the ones that you need to send out. Yep. Hopefully we'll consume the other material. Okay. There. Yeah. 
But if you don't, trust me, if you don't clear an area large enough, you're going to be moving that material around the rest of your life. You have to move it to be a greater area because you can't use it according to Nate. You, you, that's not material that's going to pack and you're not going to pour a foundation on top of it. You're mm -hmm. not going to do that. <coughs> it's not the right material for that. So anyway, this is a step in the right direction. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, so hang on a second here. All right, that's it. <clears throat> Number seven. Review comments from town council regarding earth removal bylaw. So Tracy had coordinated getting our current bylaw to our town council for a rewrite. And he promptly, promptly, um, I don't know why it's dated April 27th. That's how long ago we, we asked, and your agendas were just really busy, so I kept putting it off before the he board. Kept, gave this back to us in April? Yep. Oh, that was even before the marathon town meeting. Yep. <clears throat> when I think he's not going to be our town council anymore. So, listen, this is, um... <laughs> This is something that I want to see on our November town meeting. So my answer to all of these is one, yes, let's do number three. Yes, 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 yes. So wake up. Wanna work at the town hall? You gotta you gotta have full energy all day. You can't be yawning back there. Lorraine's yawning in the middle of the meeting. Even worse, in the middle of me speaking. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about ready to yawn myself. So my thought was, yeah, like, they, Greg knows, has seen a million of these. He yeah. knows what these should be. I know it's his job to ask these questions, but my answer to all these is yes. <laughs> well, Mr. Chair, um, in item number one, He's asking the board to decide what type of fee you want to go in. We need to tell three. Him. Yep, I said three on that one. Yeah, I don't. Eight cents per cubic yard, effective two months before I was born. That's our current. I fee think structure. it went to fifteen. Ooh, it's fifteen. No, they raised it. Oh, they went up. Oh, look at that. Cubic yard. They, they raised it the year I graduated from high school. <laughs> they have an administrative fee of two hundred dollars an acre. They did look at it since then, but opted not to increase it. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be comparable to what the market is, whatever that is. Twenty eight years ago, that Greg could help us with. Yeah. Different towns. I mean, it's all over the place. Um, Middlebury charges a quarterly fee. It's just a flat quarterly fee, and they pay it four times a year. There are other people that just charge by the yard. There are other people that charge by the acre, just the acre. So it's all over the place. There's really no consistent answer. Um, I Number three, consultant fees. How does the board feel about that? Um, we don't, we, we don't get as bills when a project is done. We we just don't get as bills. I ask yep. and ask and ask, and they I, never. Do I I say yes, and I say too bad. You're gonna get an as built. My recommendation to so I get an as built is that we we assess an engineer's fee right up front when the yes. project starts. Yes. Do it. We hold it in escrow, and then when they submit their as built then we can release I actually them. want that on the planning board too. Um, I wanted to have that conversation with the planning board for the what, peer review services so that they're paying for an engineering company to come out, yeah. which most <laughs> other towns do Excuse as well. Um, I think they already have that in their rules and regs. But they don't do it. Not all the time, no. Ever. Okay. Oh. It is. Planning board is the planning board, Mitzi. It's just like the school committee. You can try to twist their arm, but they're not beholden to the board of selectmen. Until it becomes our problem. 
It's never our problem. It kind of. Well, it, it, you're right. Woodland Ridge was not. We it's just not our ended problem. up you listening went, to you the problem. You ended up solving that problem, <clears throat> but that wasn't our problem to solve. Although the people of Woodland, of the good people of Woodland Ridge, I'm sure appreciate it. But you know what can you do? You can't. You know, can only save so many baby kittens. <laughs> right? <laughs> so is the answer to this question you want him to address all of these items? Yeah, so, let, well, this is just my opinion, and, and I obviously want to hear from John and Mitzi. My answer on one was yes, let's do number three. Yes, let's increase the fee. Yes, let's charge consultant fees. Yes, let's address the stockpiling issue. Yes, let's put some teeth in enforcement. Yes, let's reward it because it is so poorly written. That's why I said let's have town council do it. I, I didn't even understand until I saw this <coughs> on the agenda that that was the ongoing, you know, earth removal, right? Wasn't that what was on the, the priority stockpiled. list? Oh, no, what's oh. that, what's that no, other thing? No, it's the arrest and removal bylaw. That's what it was, right? That was on there every time yes. we looked at it and go, what is that? I don't even know what that is. It's been on since the so audit was done in 2000. But there, there are only... Yeah. The town Council has said our bylaw. There are only a few permits. That is, yeah, I don't, th I don't think there's anyone that's actively, actively hauling material. I think we gave out three. Uh, and I don't know that they're active. You can give T.L. Edwards one, but he's not actively hauling material out of there. That is, it's just a stockpile. So um, we're, we're, uh, we're writing a bylaw for potential right. future use because no one really is hauling. I don't think anyone's hauling material out. And the stockpiling under four you could say that could have been the butlers, but there's plenty of stockpiles in the in the town. But they fall under agriculture for the most part, and they're usually regulated by the agriculture and by the state uh, <coughs> structures, not necessarily the town. They're not really hauling it out. They're making New England rental loom. is stockpiling. There are a lot of places that are stockpiling that we well, should be no, clear. No, no they yeah. are, but they're not really earth removal that is the stockpiling that that's a they're, they're using a business for a non uh, a business that wasn't supposed to be there mm -hmm. but an earth removal permit doesn't solve the rental place but stockpiling is part of it's our earth, earth removal it, it, stockpiling you get you get into the nightmare of the agricultural use mm -hmm. i don't care you can go to several farms in town that make the piles uh, gigantic, not little composting piles, big composting. It's allowed under agricultural business to do that kind of stuff. If you want to, if we're writing this to enforce a stockpiling problem, then this isn't. This, no, isn't no, the, I, this isn't the vehicle no, to do that. Isn't. I think what Greg is saying is that it's earth materials that are brought from to the property from other sites. So it's right. it's an earth removal operation that is is maybe pulling out sand and, and bringing it to another site just to store it, which is different than New England Rental, which right. is bringing in stuff to sell at retail. Right. So I, I think it's a Right. There's a distinction. Right. Most there. people started out with earth removal bylaws because they didn't want to end up with a 50 acre site stripped of all the valuable loom and everything, and you end up either with a rock pile, and people just say, see you later. And uh, right. so I'm not too sure what we are trying to resolve here by changing an earth removal bylaw because we don't have any earth removal going on in town nor have we had it going on in town for years well not for that years. not that long ago we had Jean Bartlett we had cranberry bogs going yes, on yes Jean Bartlett's property but was still 10 a, years ago there's still a lot of land in town where someone could decide 
um, they want an earth removal. Oh, absolutely. So I think that this right. is forward right. looking, and I think right. it's it's right. the time to do it is when nobody's really doing right. it. Yeah. Right. Because I, then you don't have people complaining. Right. right. But I want to make sure I don't object to the earth removal bylaw. But if we have other issues, stockpiling, offending neighbors, and things like that, those are different issues. Yeah. And Not to be resolved by this, I don't think. But your right. earth removal. This is specific to to earth materials brought to a property from other sites in relation to earth removal. You know, it's not like they're they're buying something at wholesale and selling it at retail. Right. right. You know, right. I think it's specific I mean, to the operation. We have that issue that's did we ever get a resolution on it with regard to um Pilots? Yeah. The, the, I mean, they're, that, a one way street. That, that they're a one-way street of just hauling out. They're oh, not bringing Reducing the piles yeah. in total. Right, they're just reducing Mr. Chair, the we piles. Mr. Chair, we did have a gentleman come in, and he did ask for an application for an earth removal project. He didn't tell me where or what, but he came in probably about a month ago. So we may have a new earth removal project starting up at some point. Um, and, and a lot of it is, I think Greg wants to clear up a lot. Like, there is one line that talks about Loom can't be removed from Lakeville. Well, when somebody clears a property and they're digging out like the fields, you know, you have a lot of loom left in it, you know, so he's like, well, one place it says it can't be removed, right. one place it says you can remove it. So I think he wants to try to clean it up a little right. bit. Right. Well, my, my thinking was way back, probably before April 27th, <laughs> was just work with Greg and yeah. present us with a bylaw. Right. Okay. So right. if you're looking for guidance on this, yeah, like explore all of these things with him and see what see what you get. I mean, you, you're the one that has implemented it from a, from an administrative perspective for the town, so you're best suited to. You have the most perspective on all of this, honestly. It's been a little unwieldy to to use, especially the fee collection, because right, I'm so not an engineer and I can't tell you if the amount they're reporting is right or. You know, so right. that's been a little unwieldy. But if, if they have to pay somebody to go out and do a survey to verify w what there is f to to qualify the fee, then then that's on them. Or maybe you just do a flat fee. I mean, whatever you think is easiest. Perhaps they could come up with a pricing structure for this to this many yards, this to this, you know, and throw in an engineering component. <clears throat> and during the hearing, the board definitely has all the neighbors coming you know those are pretty big hearings because they're right. you can regulate the hours of operation oh yeah no yeah. I, those yeah. are big deals yeah. when when you have a serious right. earth removal project right. going right. on but right. but you know it's like john said we haven't seen that in years but that's why we want to do this um and just you know work with greg on on exploring these things and and come up with one that you feel fits the town and then we'll talk about you know whether we think that there's an angle that maybe was missed or whether it suits the needs but right. so, I mean the whole I just want to get it done right. I do too. Right. And right the whole purpose behind earth removal is to protect the town's assets that is they can't strip property send it to Westwood and you end up with a, right. a valueless cool. piece right. of property yeah. but all the other <coughs> issues of uh, of loom removal and loom sales and and uh, stockpiling the things that are somewhat nuisance to the adjoining neighbors that's almost not part of an earth removal we, we had a, we had because of the bylaw one of the developers wanted to move loom from one subdivision he was doing over to woods edge and our bylaw wouldn't let him just move loom within town right. Some you know, it's right, all right. of those little. You should be able to yeah. move it within your town, and then and then there should be some vehicle that allows them to to object and, and mitigate. Mm. Too. Uh, I mean, if he has a development going on in, in Middleborough versus Lakeville, and he has, you know, hundred thousand yards of loom in his property, he wants to move it. I suppose you should ask permission because you're trying to get an as-built. And find out what you're getting left with. Yeah. That is, I had waste management. I'll give you an example. Waste management came to me. They want to excavate 30 acres down 10 feet. I'd end up with a 30 acre pond. The hell am I going to do with that? So they wanted it to cap landfills. You know, so you want to prevent some of that. 
I think, from going on, because then you end up with a bunch of uh, pawns that serve no purpose at all, and they've stripped all the assets out. But there are none go. I, I agree that now's the time to do it. Uh, but we want to allow builders to be able to move material to other places. And stockpiling, which is usually the nuisance of mixing manure, shaving, sand, that isn't really earth removal. It's usually composting that's covered by other regulations. Th those are the ones you may want to look at. We don't have a composting regulation, do we? Probably not, and that's the that that, that's the one that commission thing that, that we that's should. That's the one that really. Them? That's the one that aggravates okay. uh, people. Uh, DEP actually yeah. does that. Uh, with but it's that even, came up with. Right. It's even far beyond that. The farmers get away with it, rightfully so, because they're trying to compost, use their smelly manures to do something else with it. Make some money on it. And one thing, too, where this is a general bylaw, you're not required to have the advertised public hearings. But in the past, on different general bylaws, the selectmen have thought, well, we'll just hold an, a regular hearing if anybody has any questions. So I don't know once this comes down if you want to, but you don't have to. No, trust, right. trust me, we have nothing going on. It, it's kind of preventive maintenance yep. for the future. Yeah, when when we get yeah. something we can work with, yeah. um, for consideration for town meeting, we'll do a public hearing yeah. prior to the town meeting. Okay. 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 Thank you. I didn't. We don't fin come on. Yeah, it's kind of afterwards. Too, okay. But I'm trying to line up a CDC meeting. Any new business? I can give a brief update on regional FinCom. Okay. So. Sorry, I asked. <laughs> I'll do a quick one. Um, we met. We are going to meet once a month. Sorry, I asked. Is the plan. Um, it was, right. as to be expected, a somewhat, um, I don't want to say unproductive meeting, but a meeting in which we are kind of trying to establish really where that committee is going because we run into the issue of having contract negotiations which will determine the largest component of the entire budget and what's the correlation between the contract negotiations and the regional FinCom and how can we even have a conversation about that if possible because we can't go into executive session because we just I guess can't um, as that group, um, from what I understand. Maybe we can, but what good does that do? We can't participate in the contract negotiations, so we're not negotiating a contract, so it's not really a reason for us to go into contract negotiations in executive session. So it, there's just going to be a lot of trying to figure yeah, out. That, that's a poor interpretation of the, of, <coughs> of the open meeting bylaw. If you are, are charged with giving an opinion relative to the financial the financial aspect of the school budget, like the contracts, you absolutely could go into executive session under contract negotiation to discuss that. But I think the problem is trying to then get that recommendation to that committee. It, Why? It, we, they I, just would then get that in executive session themselves. They would enter into executive session to hear your your opinion on subcommittee's the, opinion on okay. on the contract negotiation, and that's that's pretty pretty easy to do. Okay. You should yeah, we kind of got problem. hung up on that. I said, well, maybe we should talk to town council because I don't know, you know, whether or not we could even do yeah. that. But yeah, we it, it, we'll see where it goes um, because we're you know we all know that we're in a, a very bad position. Um, they declared that their E and D will likely be between one hundred and one hundred fifty thousand dollars certified this year, which means they can't even sustain their own con contribution to the operating budget that they put in last year, which was three hundred thousand dollars. So um, there's certainly some large issues with the school budget, which we knew we'd have going into this year anyways, um, because there's about four hundred fifty thousand dollars of non recurring one time well, really more than that revenue. Um, taken from stabilization funds that funded their operating budget. 
they're going to contract negotiations and I had suggested that the only thing that would be good that would come out of them would be a cut to the total costs that would be coming from the contract in order to maintain a sustainable budget. So they have somewhat charged the regional FinCom with solving that problem. So we'll see how that goes. I, I guess I'd have to go back and you're more familiar with me of reading the charge of the Regional Finance Committee. It was to try to help make a budget recommendation. Budget recommendations. And now uh, I'm not so sure that the Regional FinCom has made budget recommendations to the school committee we, on an annual basis. We did. To, that and, and that they don't pay any attention to them. Well, yeah. I. And so maybe you're, you what I call the, the whipping boys of, of the school committee, and and I'm not so sure that it serves a purpose, other than uh, trying to support only their their agendas. I don't know what if if they don't pay attention to what the regional FinCom suggests, then why bother? And, and furthermore, if they've charged you, your subcommittee, with solving their problem, but don't even allow you to discuss it at the meetings for fear of violating an open meeting law, it's a, it's a farce. It's, a, it's an absolute farce. If, if the FinCom, this isn't to bash the FinCom that you're on, but if the FinCom can only deal with 15% of the budget, which is the non-contractual part that, remember, they write the contracts. Because if it's salaries and the health benefits comprise 85%, oh. that's all that should really be being discussed. I mean, well, you can discuss the budgets about student enrollment, class size, teacher, number of teachers, whatever. I, I, I'm not too sure uh, because you you're so astute at the numbers that uh, one says, well, what are we really doing here? <laughs> yeah. And we I, hear that from you. Oh, yeah. And you certainly hear it I, from us. I, I said that multiple times at that meeting. I'm like, I don't really know what the purpose is. Uh, if we're I not don't. supposed to be dictating policy, but yet you want us to think about ways that we can change policies through financial means to... Who's driving that committee? Who's chairing that committee? Um, Steve Owen is now leading it. Um, we have not officially... We never voted on a chair. We never voted on right. any and of that either. And but that's fine, but somebody should be a chair and somebody with that chair should read that mission statement before every meeting and say this is our focus this is what we're trying to do um, right I mean that the specifically it states that the purpose the regional finance subcommittee shall serve as an independent advisory subcommittee to the regional school committee on matters of finance and budget which you know, it says the Regional Finance Subcommittee shall, prior to the vote on the annual budget by the school committee, present its recommendation to the committee. Um, again, it's, it's a recommendation. I mean, I think, though, John, the one other thing, though, is you're saying if we only have the ability to manipulate 15 percent of the budget, um, without, I guess, without considering the contract negotiations, we do have the ability to... I suppose make recommendations on the rest of the budget, oh. which is you know all of that without any increases. Um, you know, and that being said, all I can think of is the only recommendation that I could ever support from a sustainability standpoint is is a cut to the budget of probably two million dollars, which is where the start of it should have been last year, in my opinion, because now it's an even bigger cut with a bigger issue of how to deal with that. Um, that being said, we'll see where this goes. Oh, right. No, I, I like your, I mean, you, you're there, you know the numbers, and uh, do your recommendations and uh, see where it goes, like you said, see where, see where the meetings go. Yeah. Okay, any old business? Uh, just in the so just that pause and just no just the just, just just in the read okay. file. I was done. There's nothing really more to say. No, <laughs> no just the 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 DEP talking about that uh, the permits won't be uh, needed for a long time. 
uh, just to bring that out once again, that much to my surprise that Lakeville being a pond complex, as I call it, one would think that the stormwater management would have a great effect on us, but most of the stormwater discharge that goes into, we'll call it Assawamset, is all off state roads. And everything that goes into the pond by the homes, if you will, are all on private property. We, we haven't accepted any of the roads. So that there's so little right. of this. So I caution you, don't I don't want to make it a mountain out of a molehill. We can't discharge water into the state road here, which goes into Assawampson. But we talked about wash basins for fire trucks and things like that need to be up the highway barn. You could just put one right here in the driveway. It doesn't go anywhere. That's how most of them go in. They just go into a 500-gallon yep. closed system. This isn't as big a deal as I thought because the state said they're not going to do any of it. So there you go. This is a state law, and they're saying we're not going to monitor right. any of this. They don't thing. have the money to implement it now either. Right. So don't spend a lot of money implementing something that isn't significant in the town. Knowing where all the stormwater discharges are and things you have to do. But the EPA has, I know one small town near us has already been fined. And they're ex big fines for not well, doing it. Maybe, the maybe they're permit. fined for a specific problem that what they was did. What town? I'm not sure. East Where Bridgewater had it. Well, the, I know they had like well, did illegal discharge yeah. or something or illicit discharge. But I think what one of the big things that I remember was they were washing their fire trucks like on like the front of town hall and uh, having all the water drain in right. to, you know. Right. You, can't, it, right. So you, can't, you can't do that. They didn't have the correct that. drainage. But that's yeah. the only thing you can do. But you could solve that pretty inexpensively. Yeah, but uh, right. I mean, right. I'm not overly concerned. No, okay. So I, I did read this letter and... Yep. I, I do want to just make sure that with the community compact letter that came out too, I mean, we've got grant opportunities available. I don't see why we wouldn't, um, you know, start looking at that. We've got one grant application for the efficiency and regionalization grants. They open on October 16th. They close on November 16th. And then the IT grant that we did last year and got the $40,000 for opens in January. So we have the entire strategic plan for IT. That one's extremely simple to just cut and paste that we should make sure that we're prioritizing that. So I just don't want to lose those dates. Yes. And Freetown, uh, one of the selectmen had called if we were interested in doing anything regionally with Freetown. Oh, perfect. For the school district because sure. we can. That's one of the, I don't know what that could be. Budget work drops? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Union contract negotiations. <laughs> Training. Can we get a grant for that? Maybe. Maybe we can. Okay. So I'll call. It's Charlie. Um, is it Lincoln? Oh, is the new. Town? Yeah, he's the one that called. Sullivan. Sullivan. I always say Lincoln. Oh, he's the know. new selectman. Have they picked a new town administrator? That they almost got no. funded like twenty thousand dollars for. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> town meeting. Turned all that down, right? Yeah. I just have some old business. Just to follow up, the Sluckman uh, had wanted me to get in writing from attorney Jim Fox that he didn't need the easement for uh, the Nook Street property. I have that in writing. And um, we checked in with Brian Madden at LEC on trying to get Ted Williams remapped um, mm. in changing the map. Um, did, I'm not sure if I forwarded this to you, but they wouldn't change the map. Uh, so we forwarded him the newer information, and he's going to schedule a meeting with Natural Heritage to come out to the property for the location of the police station. Okay. Any other business? We have no. any other business? All right, we're going to jump into executive executive session briefly. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Number 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, specifically the laborers' union. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect 
on the bargaining position of the board and the chair so declares and pursuant to MGLC 30A section 21A7 to comply with the open meeting law MGL 30 chapter 30A section 20 to F approval of executive meeting minutes for July 31, 2017 and August 11th, 2017 and the chair so declares not to come back. Once we've entered, we will stay there indefinitely. That's my motion. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Aye. 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 Aye.